how do you deal with challenging situations in your life so to help me discuss that is a good friend of mine we just met and uh, I'll let her introduce herself and tell us who you are and what do you do thank you very much Daniel my right. name is Rachel Mbogwa I am a psychologist okay or counseling psychology and I help people walk through the hard challenges so dealing with hard uh, challenges these are things that happen every day of our lives right. and most of them are losses because uh, you may lose a job lose a child lose a pregnancy uh, like a, uh, the current situation the pandemic the fear so those are day-to-day -day losses that you've encountered so i help people walk through those losses yeah. and they come out stronger and better so um at what point did you decide i think i want to venture into this field i want to go out there and help people i know you run a youtube channel called heart hearts yes. um how did you get started and uh, yeah helping people for me it's a passion is also a, what i'm trained for but it just didn't start now i'm a trained uh, computer engineer okay did that for, for five years then later realized i think i need to pursue my passion and uh, this passion is helping people cope with day-to-day -day challenges how i started that is going back to school before education, I used to help people. Just the way you find a friend of yours is in a problem and you want to come in. How? What can I do? My relationship is not working. He told me this or she told me this. And uh, just to give a direct or a better way, I had to go back to school. So I went to school and studied counseling psychology. And I got a better perspective of how are the problems handled and how is it that they affect people differently and it is in that that I, uh, I allowed myself that actually the best way that I can be able to help this is to give them a platform. So there is a one-on-one -on -one counseling, there is a group counseling, there is a training like preparing people that are getting into marriage, we call them premarital or people that are already in marriage and they are having challenges, we call it postmarital, bridal showers where young ladies are not prepared for what to expect. So there are also the corrective measures where you're in a problem, currently you've lost someone, we help you through. There is preventive, like you're preparing to get married and you don't know what to encounter. Instead for us waiting for you to divorce, for us to go through counseling, we do preventive measures. There is also uh, trauma. Something has happened, an accident and you've lost someone and how do we help you in this? So all this platform, you mean we, we have those variety of activities that can help people uh, be able to cope with various situations or prevent an occurrence of such happening that people will be more equipped, better knowledge, that they will be able to handle that situation. So other than that, in our today's technology, you cannot use just one channel because as much as I would wish to reach to so many people, I can only reach to the people around me. But with, an, with the technology, you can be able to reach so many. So that's how I came up with the idea of doing a YouTube channel, have a Facebook account and giving all this product that actually you don't have to reach me from your area of residence. I can give you a call. We call it a telephonic counseling. We can chat that I'm feeling suicidal. What is it that I can be able to do? It's also being able to give these services to the people at an easy reach that you can be able to get this help. So that's why I started a YouTube channel, right. more so for informative. Some of the cases that we get during counseling, they can be prevented and some was lack of knowledge. For instance, children are becoming in discipline because they have encountered a divorce. But when you go through counseling and you're able to understand, it is the way the children were handled during the separation. Either they were used as a tool for communication, go tell your father, um, go tell your mother. So the disconnect was created. And because the children are hurting, they become in discipline. And the parents are wondering, please talk to my daughter. She's not performing in school. But you don't know there's an underlying issue of how that separation occurred and how it was handled. So it is through this platform of YouTube channel, Facebook, that I use it to educate and to help people get to learn that actually you can prevent some situation. Or if you hear what happened to someone else, you will be able to learn some skills. And I'm very sure if you are informed, you will be able to get that information to the person in need in a very correct way. 
For instance, if a friend of yours come and tell you, I'm going through a divorce, what should I do? Yeah. Because you've had this, you've watched this video and you've got knowledge that I've shared through the channels, you'll be able to help someone else. So the need becomes uh, met in different aspects. The knowledge is shared and you get to reach out a bigger scope. And like when you're doing just a one-on-one -on -one and helping you deal with the loss or even the divorce or separation that you've experienced. That is quite uh, moving. I want to encourage you to uh, go to YouTube, search for Heart Hearts. In the description of this video, we'll give you a link of where you can go and check out her YouTube channel, subscribe yes. and get to know more about it. So uh, you have talked about several difficult situations yes. or challenging situations that people face in life. And one of them is loss. Yes. Um, personally, I this year, it was quite a challenging uh, moment for me. I lost my brother. She's uh, very close. Uh, I'm, I'm the person. I'm the one who's uh, following him. Previously, I've lost people, but they were not that close to me. Probably grandfather, grandmother, uncle, sister. Uh, not sister, yeah. But uh, for the first time, someone in our nuclear family, mm -hmm. we lost him, and it was quite um, a challenging experience. It affects how you generally perceive life in general, both at work, uh, at home, how you look at life, it's uh, quite different. I don't know, is it the same thing that happens with most people? And what would you advise as the best way to maybe go through such a loss? I'm sorry, Daniel, for your loss. But these are things that happen to uh, every day. And when we say losses, there are different kind of losses. Someone may have lost a brother like you did, and I'm sorry for that. Other may have lost a pregnancy. Another one may have lost a parent. Another may have lost a job. So we call them all losses. And people experience these losses depending on different uh, personality. There's someone who will cry, cry out. There's someone who will close doors and doesn't want to be to, to share with anyone. And most of this challenging situation find someone in a very humbling experience in that that you cannot explain what happened or what is it that would have done differently to change the situation. Unfortunately, most of the people do not see it as a need to seek for help. Why do I say seek for help? People will say, let's bury, sorry for your loss, and like life moves on. But in the actual sense, life does not move on. Inside you, there is a loss you've experienced. Inside you, there is a heavy burden that you're carrying. Things that were said during that season. So why are you crying? He's just a brother from an ignorant person who didn't know the intensity of those words. So you'll find during that loss, there is the loss of your loved one, but there's also the words that were spoken during that period, the process. Maybe it's a boss and you ask for permission to go for the burial and you ask, why should I give you five days? It's just a brother, just go three days and come back to work. Yeah. They do not understand the intensity or the heaviness that is within your heart. And what should people do during this time? I think the same way you get headache, and you think of going to the hospital, it is the same way I would advise people. Get to reach out to a counselor. And I am a counselor. And you can reach out to me. And I think in each and every area, you'll be able to get either in a church, you'll ask for a counselor, they will provide you, depending on where you are. Reach out for help. And even if you're not able to reach out for help, I know there is a best friend that you can confine your information to and tell them, I just need to sit down and tell you what I'm, I'm feeling. Yes. Share out your frustration. And you know, my brother was sick and during that sick season, I visited every day or I was not able even to visit my mom, depending on what loss you're referring to. Right. Have someone that you can share with. And in this sharing, you'll be able to express. And we say in sharing, you're relieving the pain within you and you're sharing it with. We always say a problem half shared is halfway solved. So, actually, I just wanted to ask how true is that and how does it work? In fact, therapy works in sharing. We do not give people uh, medication until, uh, unless it's a psychiatric case. Okay. So in, in counseling, it's just sharing. Where we sit down and I, ask, uh, and, and I ask you, please tell me, what is it that is going within you? And you'll be able to tell me, I'm feeling frustrated or I'm feeling angry. Why are you feeling angry? This is what my wife did or this is what I'm experiencing. This is what my boss told me. And that is the moment that you express your emotion. Let me share you some, something with you that is very intriguing in this aspect. Yeah. When you're happy, do you hold back laughing? 
No, you don't. You laugh out. Yeah. You don't care what people will say about you because it is excitement that is within you. Normally what happens, it is the excitement that is within you that is being released outside. So right. the emotion of excitement is released, but when you're sad, yeah. do you cry out? Most of the people, especially men, what do they say? Men yeah. don't cry. Yes, yes. You don't show your emotion. Even when you're angry beyond, you rather close your mouth and walk out. It is not healthy. Emotions are not meant to be stored in us. They are meant to be expressed. And in African culture, we have a weakness of suppressing the negative emotion in us right. and expressing the happy. Ex emotion outside. What it's us is because the negative emotion bulge inside and what they give birth, they give birth to anger. Anger accumulated give birth to bitterness. Bitterness accumulated give back to depression. Depression, you start now picking things that you're not able to. Like you see, Tunokota Makaratasi, yeah. it was birth from an anger. Okay. An anger of an emotion that was suppressed. So the sharing, it's for real. It, Problem have uh, shared, it's half uh, solved. And the crying bit, how does it help? As in, I think your best was a bit about it, but um, I find it. Do you need really to cry or shed tears? Per se? Let's talk about the tears. Yeah. Actually, it's not the aspect of shedding tears that matters. It's the aspect of expressing the anger. Because the reason why you find a child crying, they're not crying because they're excited. They're crying because there's pain within them that is expressed in terms of. So if you can be able to express your pain out, either in words or in tears, it does not matter. As long as that pain does what? Get yeah, out. Get so there are some who will cry, true, but there are some who will not. But you, the same way, let's take an example of a child. You can be able to tell a child that is sad, even if they are not crying, true? Yeah. Because there is an emotion that they are expressing. But you can still be able to tell a, a child who is crying that they are sad because you can see tears so there are different ways of expressing it's just that some will express in crying others will express by the facial, by the facial expression but whichever way it is whether you cry as long as you're expressing those sad emotions out you're healing yourself because uh, anger and those sad emotions are like cancer they eat from within and you think you're whole yet you're crumbling from within I hope I have answered. Yeah, thank you for that. Thank you for that. I know you have dealt with several cases. Probably you can share with us which is one of the most common uh, challenging situation that people go through. And uh, maybe to tie that with something that people don't feel like they need to seek help for. And it ends up eating them or getting worse uh, as time goes. Uh, with, with the many cases that I've interacted with, death is one of the major unplanned and anticipated cases that you'll find. Most often, you'll find uh, someone have lost a daughter or have lost a brother or a husband. They will mourn, and especially in our African culture, people will come together in the house, comfort you, walk with you, even help you plan the burial. But after the burial, they hardly show up. And what most of the uh, clients do, they hardly also go to seek help. Because they feel like, I've tired so many people. They were here during my, 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 my loss. They were here during burial. They were here during the morning. Why should I bother them? So most of them don't think it's an issue. So they, like, they want to resume their norm. Like if it's going to work, going to work, feeding the children. Yet it is not normal. It's not, the normal is not, it, they have not gone back to their normal. It's just that the routine. I should wake up, they wake up, I should go to work, they go to work. And they have not dealt with the loss. So those are the common cases. And most of the, the reason why it is, uh, it is so hard is because some of them are not anticipated. So even if someone was sick, you are hopeful that they will get well. So some are accident, it was not something that you knew, and they are sudden. So you will hear so and so has just passed on, what happened? So m most of the cases that you'll find is the loss of loved one. A close friend or a relative or someone that you treasured or loved okay. now how then to, to, to answer your question how then will they be able to get help is just that I think community will be more accommodative that as much as we think the barrier is done we should not rush them into recovery like no you should give out their clothes or you should shift the house allow them go through grief because grief is a process it's not a one-day occurrence allow them to and the other thing is that we should not disappear all of us the fact that you've been there through the burial the morning session let's 
even if it's a family let's plan that someone else will be will be with the person that i've lost uh for a given time I love the way other cultures do. Like they would do a burial today, but they will ensure for the next 30 days there is always someone who comes to view or to visit. Like if it's a person who've lost a husband, the family would ensure that every evening there's someone visiting the person and sitting with them and getting to to allow them to share and even help them in do one to three. This process helped them in recovery that they're able to pick up their pieces too. Two, I would advise that people feel free to seek help. It does not hurt just reaching out to a counselor to help you get to know walk through this process of so that's what I would say. Thank you very much. I think uh, you have also covered like the, what I wanted to ask next about what would be the general advice uh, be to people who are going through such a uh, situation. But um, all in all there are different uh, challenges that we face in life. At Career Point Solutions mainly we help people who are looking for jobs and these people probably they are just fresh graduate mm. as someone who has lost a job mm. probably what would be the general advice um, to someone who has lost a job i know we have talked about much about uh, death mm. and um, yeah what would you give advice in such a case uh, thank you so much daniel yeah. i think in, in terms of losses the loss that hits someone's harder uh, or even more is when you had a job yeah and you had your plans then all of a sudden you're told we no longer need you why is it hard i think that information hits you harder than in, in terms of get in you more than the the deliverable because when someone say we no longer need you from what the employee here is that your worth it raises question on your worth it's not what are you able to do because when they are hiring you they look at your qualification and they are telling you this is your CV I see you're qualified you'll be able to deliver then maybe after a short time they're telling you uh, we no longer need you i think what makes the loss of a job intense is because it questions the person's ability more than their qualification and what i would advise for them that have uh, gone through the loss of a job or even during this season they have lost their job I would ask I would ask you to allow your mind not to question your qualification in terms of as a person am I not good enough is it that so and so was much better I delivered more than so and so no and take it as a season and time to get to the next level there's someone who said you don't know the person who fired you yesterday was giving you an opportunity to open your own company or to move to the next level at times life gives you that drive that is pushing you to the next destination and at times the push is never nice let me give you an example of an eagle right hatches the the eaglet feeds them very properly and they get to that comfort but the strategy of this uh, eagle is every day that this eaglet will be able to grow but what does it do it removes the feathers each and every time he realizes they have grown and there are times he will even throw them so that they can lie they, they can learn to to fly so at times even in our own life god has a way of pushing us out of our comfort and what are these comfort comfort is certain certainty that i'm sure i have a job i'm sure tomorrow i'll be able to buy a land i'm sure these are my plans that i'm having and when this life pushes us to that extreme that you've lost your job you've, you you've lost your source of income i think we should not view it as the worst or you're going to die and look at it as what is the opportunity for me what is it that i can do with myself even for them that are looking for a job like you've freshly graduated from school i think we come out of high school or university with an attitude Sorry. i'm qualified i'm an engineer i'm a doctor I, it's like the rest of the people that have been working in the field they are unqualified and these are the people that i think that attitude works against you right when you're going with an entitlement instead of getting to know yes this is a new field i'm getting into i need to learn i need someone to hold my hand and the attitude works against you because when you're called in for an attachment or an internship most of the people turn it down are they paying ha huh? i can't do that I, i want something that they will be able to pay and what does that do most of the people do not get exposure and do not get experience and they hardly get a mentor because i think when you get an internship even if they don't pay you right. you'll be handed over someone else to help you this is how 
things go on in this company. This is how we run things. So despite you graduating with a bachelor's or even a master's, you need skills, hands-on skills. So what would I advise the young people that have graduated and they have tarmacked looking for a job in all aspect? I think do not, do not despite the humble beginning. Humble beginning in this aspect, you're called in to hold in an office for someone who's gone for maternity or they are sick. Please step in, whether they are paying you or not. Right. Show your qualification in that area. The other thing is, even if that opportunity of an internship does not show up, ask yourself, what can I do with myself? Because I think even with, with, with the exposure, there is, a, there is the system of our education exposes you not only to get academically smart, but also skills. Skills in this aspect. How can I make money? You're in a university, those people are struggling to get to print their project. So why can't you sit down and think of, if I get a printer, can I be printing for them? That is a job opportunity that you've created for, you, for your own self. Or even sit down and ask, what are the challenges that I encountered when I was in campus? I had one, two, three challenges. Then can I make a solution? Can I give a solution to them? Yeah. Most of the first years used to get stranded of where directions are. Yes. If you can come up with an application that can help them in direction, you're making money. So do not be uh, centered or restrained to only think of, of employment allow your mind to be creative. And if you've lost a job, do not pity party yourself. Sit down and look for the opportunities that are there, but also share. Most of the people hide themselves within closet and they say, you know, I lost a job. I cannot tell my friends. Apply. Nowadays you apply online. It's not like a long time ago I used to Tamak, Nairobi, Eldoret, Webuya looking for jobs yes. and knocking doors. Apply online. And even if you don't get to apply online or even get to be called for an interview, they are freelance jobs. Writings. Yeah. Do something for someone and they'll be able to pay you. You also know where to get something. For instance, someone is asking, why can I buy a printer? And for sure you have school in a town where you know there are printers. Yes. Why can't you look for that shop? Come and a broke and, and be a block a broker in between. Yeah. That you deliver and also maintain and do do something with yourself. But just don't sit down and pity party yourself. Thank you very much. I think I really learn a lot from that uh, uh, response and something I would also want to add is that that bit of entitlement people feel especially once you come out of school and that is one of the key attitudes that actually is killing our young people you feel entitled to get that specific job mm -hmm. and uh, I hadn't looked at it uh, in terms of when you're being uh, when you lose a job or when you're fired it's actually a direct attack to your worth rather than your qualification is like you are no longer needed mm. you are no longer someone who is of value i think that is very uh, grateful thank you very much how can people get in touch with you yes i'm on facebook yeah. i call myself heart heart clinic i'm on twitter i'm rachel Mbogwa. on instagram rachel Mbogwa. Uh, youtube heart heart clinic please follow me and also uh, share this information if you feel that these are an information that you can be able to help someone else do not hold it to yourself share i also have an office in westlands for counseling we do group therapy we do bridal showers we do divorce care if you've gone through a loss of a marriage or a relationship separation so reach out to my content on your screen or even in the description box that you can be able to get help and if you know someone or a child who've gone through the loss of, of a loved one and they're not able to cope with life please reach out let them get help that they'll be able to become a better society thank you very much i do appreciate thank you for staying with us up to this point i would uh, like to ask you again check out her youtube video, uh, channel that is heart heart yeah. clinic yes. i'll leave in the description below also like this video share it with someone who will find value out of this leave a comment we will i will be able to respond to each and every comment subscribe also to my channel daniel mutuku and remember to press the bell button so that you can get to know each and every time we release a new video otherwise thank you very much and see you next time thank you